Hey, it's Thomas here, and today we're doing a quick review on the Clearwater Algae Turf Scrubber. Big old box, but it's just a lot of packaging. It's, it's not that big. If you want to use algae as your primary source of nutrient export, but don't have enough space in your sump for a refugium or a macroalgae reactor, and you want something that's going to be really quick and simple to maintain, then an algae scrubber's the ticket. Harnessing algae for nutrient export is one of the most effective ways to keep nitrate, phosphate, and even ammonia in check while stabilizing pH. What algae we use and how we implement that algae is really gonna come down to what's going to fit our system best and what best fits with our individual maintenance habits. Now, algae turf scrubbers have actually been around for a very long time. They were first invented in the 1980s at the Smithsonian Institute by scientist Walter Aidey and are still to this day considered widely to be a very effective form of filtration. They're different from refugiums in that they focus on growing filamentous pest algae rather than macroalgae in a controlled environment optimized for its growth so that it can reduce nutrients effectively and outcompete the same or similar pest algae in the display while taking up less space than a traditional refugium. Clearwater Systems has modernized the algae turf scrubber, making it very easy to set up and implement on your tank without taking up very much space. It's also extremely energy efficient considering what this thing has to do to outcompete the lights on your aquarium. And it's very easy to maintain, like really easy. In the box, you'll find the Clearwater Systems algae turf scrubber pre-assembled, including the housing, the barbed inlet, the algae screen, and the LED lighting. Before plumbing it to your system, You'll want to swap around the bulkheads that are pre-installed backwards for shipping purposes. Once flipped around, you can either use PVC plumbing to work it into your system or soft plumbing with the use of PVC barbed fittings. To push water through the algae scrubber, you can use a utility pump like a Ceche or your return pump manifold. The barbed inlet can face in any direction, so you can have it face whichever way fits your system best. The Clearwater System scrubbers are compact and take up little space compared to a refugium or macroalgae reactor rated for the same volume of water, which is excellent if you don't have a lot of space left in your sump and one of the reasons that they're such a popular option. They're external only though, so if you don't have a convenient spot to place it right on top of or around your sump, a couple of brackets inside of the stand is a great solution. Or if you don't yet have a sump, you can pick up a clear water system sump designed to work directly with these algae scrubbers. It has a pair of robust rails to hold up that algae scrubber directly over the center chamber right where you want it. These scrubbers are built tough with quality acrylic and PVC components so that they last a long time and continue being easy to maintain throughout that period. For example, I love the robust unions. They're easy to take apart and are heavy duty with large threads, which leads to reliable long-term operation when compared to cheaper alternatives, which is really important since you're going to be removing the bar the screen is attached to on a regular basis to harvest algae. There is no guesswork on what lighting to use to grow your algae since Clearwater includes them on their turf scrubbers. In order to get vigorous algal growth, Clearwater Systems uses two custom-made LED lights, one on each side of the screen with a combination of 660 and 640 nanometer red diodes alongside 450 and 420 nanometer blue diodes. The spectrum is focused on the photosynthetic peaks for algae. They aren't shy on wattage either, which is excellent since they need to outcompete the lighting on the display tank. For example, the 200 model I have here has two fixers that draw 60 watts total. The overall design is easy to understand for any hobbyist. Water's pumped in, runs through the slotted pipe holding the screen, runs down the screen to the bottom of the reactor and flows out through the drain. For safety, there's a backup drain as well in the event something clogs the main drain, which is an excellent redundancy. Algae grows on the screen, removing excess nutrients. The screen is periodically removed and the algae is harvested, effectively removing those nutrients bound up in the algae from the system. They are a little pricier than budget macroalgae reactor options like the Skims MBR, but they are much easier to harvest, which is a good thing because you'll be doing it as often as every few days, but more typically once a week or so. If you prefer less frequent maintenance, at the cost of it being more time consuming and involved, a macroalgae reactor might fit your style of reefing a bit better, but you just can't deny how easy it is to harvest an algae turf scrubber. When it comes time to harvest, you will need to turn off the feed pump or shut off the water flow via the valve on your manifold, which also means you have to remember to turn it back on when you're done. So don't forget or set up a custom feed mode on your Apex or similar controller so that the pump automatically comes back on after 10 minutes or so, which is more than enough time to harvest an algae turf scrubber. Lots of time.
you'll probably be done and be like, what is it, when, when's it coming back on? <sighs> Choosing the right size turf scrubber for your system is based on how many cubes of frozen food you typically feed on a daily basis, which is a more refined rating than just basing it on water volume of your system, since we all have different bio loads and feeding habits, but can be confusing if you feed pellets, flakes, or homemade foods. So do your best to guesstimate what you're feeding would translate to in number of cubes of frozen food, and then go ahead and pick the model based on that. It's always okay to go a step above if you think that it's not going to be enough, or if you're right on the edge between two models, you can always reduce the amount of flow going through the turf scrubber to regulate the amount of nutrient export, which is a better option than getting stuck with a scrubber that might be a little small for your feeding habits. A question that does come up fairly often is whether or not an algae turf scrubber is able to outperform a protein skimmer, essentially rendering it unnecessary. Randy is putting that theory to the test and pushing algae turf scrubbers to their limit. If you want to see just what an algae turf scrubber can do, go ahead and check out his Investigates video right here. It's a good one. I mean, all the Investigates videos are super informative, but I found this very interesting. To scrub or not to scrub? That is the question. Scrub.